I'm a bit of a photography nerd, and I've spent way too much time working with Pi cameras and way too little time telling you about it. Let's change that today. Articam sent me these three Pivot Station 5 cameras, and I'm going to be honest, this video is a little weird for me. They're doing a Kickstarter, and I don't generally like talking about things in a Kickstarter for so many reasons. Not the least of which, I've seen so many people get burned and lose their money. In this case, I don't think Articam's going to do that. They already make a ton of hardware and have shipped a ton of products. So in their case, I kind of hate this because if you can already make things and ship them, why do you feel the need to do a Kickstarter? But all that out of the way, these are some pretty neat devices, at least on the outside, and so I wanted to test these, and since I probably won't have time to make a main channel video on all three of these, I'll share my first tests with you today. First up, there's the Hawkeye. It's 137 bucks on Kickstarter, it'll be more expensive afterwards. It has a 64 megapixel camera, a built-in lens with PDAF and CDAF autofocus, basically pretty much as good as a smartphone's autofocus. And I already actually tested this camera module, uh, but it's nice to have it put together in a kit with a Raspberry Pi 5 and all the software you need. I, I think that the main thing that they're trying to do with these pivot station units is you buy this box and you have all the Pi photography stuff in a box. You're done. You don't have to buy all the different parts, put them together, sit there and try to figure out a way to mount it all up. This has a uh, tripod mount, it has the camera in the case integrated. Uh, so we're going to see what that looks like in a minute. But uh, if you want to see the, the lens, the Hawkeye, I'm not going to cover this one in this video. Uh, the Hawkeye lens itself and the focus and all that, I did a video on it I think a year or two ago over on the main channel. I'll try to remember to put a link to it. Um, the next one though is a lot more interesting to me. It's the Darksea with the IMX678 uh, image sensor in it. You can look that up, but basically it's a newer sensor from Sony with some features like it, they call it StarViz2 and it has like low noise capabilities. It's only 8 megapixels but it's made for like nighttime stuff and night sky. And uh, what I'm gonna try to do with this one, I'm not gonna do it in this video, but I'll try to do this and maybe we'll make a main channel video, is this lens, uh, I'm going to rip it off of this, this is a, what is it, an Axis 2112 PTZ camera uh, from Axis. It's, a, it's an IP camera, but I didn't buy it for the camera, I bought it to take this lens off and you'll notice it's kind of a weird lens. It's, it's got a big uh, bubbly eye. It's called a fish eye lens because fish have eyes like that, I guess. Um, but these are used a lot of times either if you need a huge field of view, like looking out like this, or if you're doing a night sky camera, you position it facing straight up and you get the night sky. You can see the stars rotating. That's going to be my intention for this camera eventually. And that was, that was honestly the main reason I wanted to talk to Articam about this. It wasn't like, I'm not trying to sell their cameras. I'm marking this as sponsored up there at the beginning of the video because they did send this stuff to me to test. We'll get to that at some point. Uh, the last camera on the list is the Clarity. This one is 168 bucks on the Kickstarter, but it'll be more. I think this one will be a lot more actually. Um, and that's that's part of the thing like with the Kickstarter, these prices are decent deals if you know you're gonna get the thing, and I think you will. This is Articam we're talking about. It's not a startup that's never done anything before. Um, and that's the weird thing about it. Like part of the reason I wanna make this video is because if you do want one of these, these are decent prices. Afterwards, when the prices go up, it might be cheaper to buy the parts yourself and put them together, uh, but they still do have a neat package. Anyway, this is the IMX283 one-inch sensor, and I think this might be the first time I've used a one-inch sensor on a Raspberry Pi. The HQ camera is smaller than one inch, and uh, it's 12 megapixels. This is 20 megapixels with backside illumination, and they pair it up with a 16 millimeter C-mount f1.4 lens. I don't know how good their lenses that they include. I'll test it. I have a few other C-mount lenses that I test with too. Uh, and another option is to buy an adapter from C-mount to Nikon or C-mount to Sony and use lenses like that. All three of these come pre-installed with kind of a, an ArduCam OS, you could call it that. It's Pi OS but it already has things like lib camera and open CV and an ArduCam camera server. So my plan is to test these three guys out just to see how the initial setup goes and uh, you know what it's all about. So I'm gonna put the Hawkeye aside for now and we'll start with the Dark Sea. I'll put this aside as well. And we'll see what we get in the box. It's, uh, it has a label on the side with the camera sensor on it. And inside, they have here. There's this is the camera itself, and then little little guy with some feet and a heatsink. 
It's interesting. It, it doesn't look like they hacked into this case, but definitely they put this tripod mount over here. And I'm going to be careful. It, and it comes with the OS pre-installed on a SanDisk Ultra 32 gig card, which is a fine card. Um, the case is working. It looks like they actually screwed the Pi in, which I've never done this on any of mine. I just leave it in there loose. Uh, but they screwed the Pi 5 in there so that it's nice and solid. I'm going to unscrew the lens just to be careful here. And there's the sensor. So this is the Dark Sea. It's not a one inch sensor. It's a little bit smaller, but it, uh, it has eight megapixels and supposedly is very, uh, very good in the dark. So let's see if this comes off. All right, so they, they basically modified the case. They glued this little ring on it to make it look nice. Uh, so that's, that's a good job. And they have, a, they have a nice little mount here. I don't know if they sell this separately, but I like that. The big question I have is how is the cooling? It looks like they just have a big heat sink Kind of a short heat sink, but it's it's a big uh, a bigish heat sink in there, underneath the camera module. That'd be my main concern is is overheating in this thing. If you're running an AI model and processing a feed in real time at 1080p or even trying 4K, that could be an issue. Hardware wise, the, the assembly is nice. This is it's very solid in there, and they screw through they screw this through the Pi into this uh, this little kit, so it's it's in there. You still could use the GPIO. A lot of uh, things might not plug in very nicely to the 5 volt and ground up at the top corner, uh, but GPIO is still somewhat accessible. And one of the camera ports is used, so not both. So I, I don't think that they do anything where they combine them and you get more bandwidth. I think it's only one of them. And then the PCI Express header is still uh, exposed there so that you could put in an expansion hat if you needed to for NVMe or something. Okay, feet are on, and uh, I guess I don't need that heatsink. Yeah, we don't need that. And they also sent along this uh, little, well, even the case of it's a little bit cheap. It's a cheap little tripod. It, I have much better ones, but this will probably hold it just fine. It's raining, apparently. Huh. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but it just started raining. <laughs> the funny thing is, this camera, this tripod is so cheap. Yeah, I would recommend getting your own tripod, not uh, using this one unless you're just doing a little testing. But that's, uh, if you want to do any angle, this, this tripod's not going to do much for you. This is good for straight up, and that's it. If you do any kind of angle, it's going to fall over. This leg doesn't even fold. All right, well, anyway, I'm not going to use that. Okay, and plug you in. It's booting up. There's the little green light. Trusty keyboard. So in the UI, there's nothing really to write home about. It just has VLC and, and all the standard stuff in PyOS. Okay, so they do have a quick start guide, uh, but connect with an Ethernet cable. I did that. No, I didn't do that. Let's connect it up so that we're on the network. And it has a fixed IP address of 10.254.10.1. So there is a fan inside this thing. I just didn't see it. Okay, so I, I'm I'm a little less worried about the throttling. I can still check on that later, but uh, that's that's good news that there is a fan inside here that is at least moving some air. There's not a ton of avenues for air to get in with that camera mounted in there, but it, there's enough that it should it should be able to keep it cool. Okay, and I'm reading a little bit more. It says if you plug it into your network, you can access it over your network too. So it actually creates two IP addresses. One is a device specific IP 10.254.10.1. So you can plug it straight into a computer and use the web UI. The other one is just whatever your router assigns it. So that's 10.0.2.240. Uh, so here's their, their wiki has instructions. That, one, one other reason I was happy to talk to Articam about this, even though I'm a little put off by the fact that it's a Kickstarter, is they, they do a good job with documentation. They've been a good uh, citizen in the, the Pi and SPC community, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but they say that I should just go to the IP address 8081. So let's try uh, 10.0.2.240.8081. And oh, well, there it is. Let's take this camera cover off. And uh, we can focus, maybe. OK, focus by spinning the camera lens. Uh oh. The uh, I have no signal. Our signal is gone. Oh no. And there's some real rain coming down now. There's like a little random storm back here. Okay, now we got a signal again. We're getting there. There we go. Now we got focus. Hey look, there's my face. Okay, so that's upside down. I don't know if there's a way to quickly flip it. 
okay, so that these are all pretty responsive. It's a little better. It's uh, we're focused. Oh no, it's gone again. Uh, it, it looks like what happens is one of the threads that's running the camera feed kind of just locks up after a bit, and that there's probably some settings that they're tweaking right now in in the beta software that I'm running. They said that there's a newer version available, but uh, it works, which is cool, and it's all remote controllable, which I like. And you can set up a, a restream over through FFmpeg, which is also kind of cool. Uh, so I would like to see them continue improving that software, and that's probably what some of the funding from building these cameras is going towards. Um, their camera streamer app and all that. Uh, it'd also be nice, I haven't tested it on mobile, but it'd be interesting to see if it works on mobile. I'm going to shut this one down. Uh, because I think I'll need to do some testing outside of this video. A little bit darker environments and nighttime and things like that to see. And I might also put this, I, I'll probably put this camera on it uh, to give it a test and, and see how they all work together. In fact, why don't I do that right now? I, I'll shut it down and see if that works. Okay, shut down. It's powered off. And I'm going to take this camera off. Now oh, what's going on here? Uh, is this the wrong thread? We had the wrong thread on here. Uh, yep, that's it. There's an adapter. Okay, I'll switch the camera input back to the screen and we'll refresh and see what happens here. And we're seeing, there's my hand. I wonder what it's, what is the focal distance for this thing? Could be very far. I might need an adapter to get this to work. Yeah, I'll have to play around with this some more because it's going to need to be, look at that, it has to be, it has to be off. I, I might have some extension tubes, let me go, I'll go check. Never fear, I have my box of C-mount goodness here. And uh, I'll try two, two extension rings. Do we need to go further or shorter? We need to go shorter, okay. We're getting better if I can screw this thing in. There we go, Oop, right there. So there's your all sky camera. I'm, uh, I'm standing like, it's about a 130 degree field of view maybe. Here's my hands, Let's see if I come out to oh, 180. Looks like, still seeing my hands. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So this would make a good uh, all sky camera. I need to clean this lens a bit. So I bought this used on eBay because that way, for everything, the camera and this thing, which I don't need, uh, that was only like a hundred, or no, like eighty bucks or hundred bucks, something like that. This camera lens alone is over a hundred. I'll clean it up and, and we'll get some of that, a uh, little bit of that dust out of there. Okie dokie. This is the Clarity with the IMX 283, 1.4 16 millimeter lens. It's always nice when you have a brand new lens and it's like, there's no dust. There's no internal dust, there's nothing, just just the little smudges here and there from the factory when they were putting this thing together. It's never going to be that clean again. That doesn't sound good. Well, hopefully this one's not damaged in shipping. First, let's check on here. Nothing inside there. So something isn't... Oh. Yeah, a long screw. Question is, where does that come from? Because I don't see any... I don't see any place where a long screw would go in here. This case is not, it, this case isn't amazing for airflow, for sure. I think Raspberry Pi, if they wanted to redesign the case and add a little more volume, you could get a little bit better airflow in here. But it is what it is, and, and Articam is working around that in the best way they can in this case. This lens is substantial. Typically that's a good sign that there's a lot of good glass in it, and uh, so how's this? So we got focus and aperture. You might be able to see that, closing the aperture down and opening it up. Okay, well, let's get this plugged in. 10.0.2.238. So let's pop over to the computer. 238. And, well, let's focus. There we go. So it's a little hazy. I don't know if that's just from I think that's just from uh, light hitting the lens. So yeah, it's it's a good it's a good picture there. So let's see, this one doesn't seem to be locking up yet. Let's see, we got all these controls. Uh, 
white balance sharpness it does it does make a noticeable difference to over sharpen a little bit let's see if we can capture <laughs> right when I hit that there was a little bit of lightning well thunder I guess uh, I hit capture I don't know if that's actually doing anything it might be but like I said this is well now now we have no signal uh, so this you know this is beta software it's the hardware that's more interesting to me right now and they're developing the software actively and they probably have a newer version like if I go here uh, video demonstrations they don't have a link on here but I'm sure they will at some point like here's a link to download the latest image or something like that let's see if they have a, they have a PyTorch demo let's see if that's in here if I go to see PyTorch test then I do dot slash PyTorch test dot sh that's quite uh, it's quite zoomed in. Oh, it, it, it's, it, it thinks that's a tie. That's actually a, a, a light. It's always fun to uh, play with these things and see what it thinks is what. It, unless you train them yourself or you have a really good model, uh, you end up... What is that? It's like a ghost. Oh, that's just a reflection from shining into the light. Focusing at 5 FPS is always... Woo! That was my fan. My shirt just got caught in the fan. Things always get wild on the third channel. Toothbrush, it thought that was. Hey, I did find a chair. There you go. Okay, you're one for 20 now. Now, th this isn't a problem with the camera. This is just the, the model that they're using and the data that they have in it. Uh, there's different models you can use. Baseball glove person. Where's that soda can? TV. Mm, try again. Bottle. Yeah, close enough. Let's try the water bottle. See if it's a bottle. Bottle. Okay, there you go. You're like two for 25 now. It's good hardware, and, and the Kickstarter prices are great, but again, my caveat, when you back a Kickstarter, you're not buying anything. You're backing it, and you're basically donating money to a cause, and you hope that that cause might pay dividends at some point, but sometimes it doesn't. I think Articam's going to ship, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I, I don't know why they're doing a Kickstarter for this when it's just good hardware anyway, and they could just have a you know a sale to kick things off. At the prices that they have them on Kickstarter, it's a decent deal for all the hardware that you get. Uh, the final prices after the Kickstarter, it's a little cheaper if you know how to do everything to put it all together yourself. But on the flip side, this is it's a cool mod to the the Pi 5 case that I haven't seen before that it's like this is a camera. You, you mount it up on a tripod, get uh, maybe a right angle USB-C power adapter, and you have a camera that you can remote control over the network. That's kind of cool for 100, 150 bucks. That puts it in the range of IP cameras. Uh, this is not a waterproof case. Don't put this outside, uh, but pretty cool. And uh, as the uh, tribute to another YouTuber, as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.